Okay, so far we've created sounds in the sample editor and played with the volume tails in the instrument editor, but sometimes the sample editor isn't the greatest for making sounds. It is possible to create your own custom drum sounds in the sample editor, which I'll probably do a tutorial on later, but it's much easier to import them. So I have four samples here. I have a closed hi-hat sound, a kick sound, snare, and a recording of me saying, what, what? And each instrument in Milky Tracker can hold up to 16 samples. That's what this window is here. So you can click load and find and select the file on your computer or you can drag and drop them right into the sample box. And Milky Tracker only supports mono sounds, so if the file you're trying to import is in stereo, it's gonna ask you what you wanna do with it, so we're gonna mix them. And we're going to put the snare on number one, mix. And uh, let's put the hi-hat on two, mix. And I'm gonna put what on a different instrument. Mix. Okay, and we can name them here. Drums. What? All right, samples are loaded, and you can see them here in the sample editor. Kick, snare, hi-hat. So looking at the snare, you can see that there's some silence here at the beginning. And actually, we can, we can see that it's actually about four milliseconds long. So here T is time, H is hex, D is decimal, and T. So we got four milliseconds of sound at the beginning, which isn't a big deal. We'd never hear it, but it's annoying to see, so I'm going to crop it out. So to do that, I can click and drag the selection and then hit crop, or I can hit range all and then command drag the edges in and then hit crop. If you hit option, click, drag, then you move the entire selection. And just watch out for shift, click, drag, because that's going to actually draw on the sample and we don't want that. But luckily there's an undo button right there. So range all, let's move this in, crop, done. So these samples are loaded under one instrument and we need to tell Milky Tracker when to play the samples when. So to do that, we're gonna open up the instrument editor. So right now, all of these zeros on the piano keyboard mean those notes are only going to trigger the kick sample at different speeds. So zero corresponds to this sample up here, zero. If you want your sounds to sound normal, they need to be on C4, in and around C4. So we're going to put the snare on C sharp four, and we're gonna put the hi-hat on D4. Oh, because the snare is on C sharp four and the hi-hat's on D4, those samples are gonna be played slightly faster and therefore sound higher than the original file. So we wanna move those relative notes down one semitone for the snare and then down two semitones for the hi-hat. So now they should sound just like the original. Another thing you could do is assign all of the other notes in your drum kit to a blank sample so that they're not accidentally triggered at awkward speeds. So I'm signing all the notes to three, which is a blank sample, so that the only time you're going to get a sound is if you play C4, C sharp four, and D4. All right, let's uh, write a, a quick drum beat here. I'm just going to wiggle around my fingers. And again, we're going to decrease the length of the pattern, make the loop shorter, and I don't know, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, very silly, but it works. And let's make um, the hi-hat on all of these beats. And we're going to delete any instance of the hi-hat happening twice. So I'm just using the arrows, the shift key to select and then hitting delete and that'll delete the, the note on that row. Okay, 
Great, let's add some what's. So what I did there is spacebar enables record mode. So when record mode's not on, the bar turns gray, and then I can select the instrument up here with the arrow keys. So I've got what selected, and then I'm going to enable record mode by hitting spacebar, and here comes some silliness. What? Let's get some high what's in here. Okay, so uh, we've got some higher ones. Let's uh, add some really low ones. So F1, Z should make it really low. It's so weird. Okay, and then maybe something over here. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop. Now to push, to actually stop it from playing, I hit escape in the top left of my keyboard. Um, the other little tip when you're inputting is right now we've got, you can see that the cursor is being followed. So I'm going to hit Command F, and that's going to turn off follow mode. And you can see up here, that's the follow mode being triggered right there. So I'm going to turn that off. And that helps me record and edit on the fly while I'm playing, while the music is playing. Let's get some really high ones here. Right on, very silly. Okay, so there's your introduction to Milky Tracker. You should have at least a basic understanding of how to make and input sounds. Uh, I'll be releasing tutorials on more intermediate topics, including all the effects, arpeggiation, panning, more volume controls, and lots more. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Patreon, GruberMusic.com. See you again.